Hello everyone. It's Relaxing Sounds 92 here. And today I'm going to do a magic video again because I actually went to a pre release last weekend and I thought it would be nice to make a video of it right away. And magic videos have been kind of popular with me in the past, so few disclaimers here. First of all, I don't know if the mic picks up on it, but my kitty Emma is right behind the camera. I'm purring very loudly because she has a really great motor. <laughs> and she's very cute and she likes to be in the proximity of me. Uh, disclaimers about magic. I am a casual player. I do not claim to have any great insights into this game whatsoever. I understand base mechanics, but other than that, I'm not the best at actual deck building. I understand when cards have synergy, um, and when I can take my time for it, sure, but I'm not the one that's gonna buy the cards online. Um, I just make do with what I have. I'm also not the kind of person that when makes a standard deck puts in four of everything just to make it optimal because I want to have a fun time and I think having a deck that has more than one win condition is more fun. So with that in mind let's just look at the stuff that I got in the pre-release. So, pre-release was a day before yesterday for me. This set is War of the Spark and it has a lot of plane walkers. Which is one of the reasons I thought this one would be fun to participate in. Um, well, it's not like I initiated it, my fiancé did. And he likes the deck building part of it almost more than, than the actual playing. And when he plays, he's awful because he loves blue black. So, oh my goodness. All the counters he has to everything you do always and all the sacrificing that makes you get rid of your own stuff it's so annoying he loves that kind of deal i'm way more straightforward i love oh my goodness emma is being such a cute kitty right now she's trying to do the cuddle roll while looking me in the eye <laughs> so um yeah i'm way more straightforward so give me some nice big creatures and a few like damage spells and I'm happy. That said, with a pre-release you just have to play with what you get and there was 50 minutes for deck building and I do not perform well under pressure. <laughs> I had basically no idea what kind of mechanics were in this set. I did not like went to magic spoiler or anything and look at all the cards beforehand so i just got a bunch of cards at once and i had no way to read all of them so what i did was i looked at like the more rare cards and which one of them i liked the best and then i decided that that those would be my colors and I would make do with them. I did not build a very great deck. It was red green because I honestly thought that that was the best stuff and then I got smashed. <laughs> well, and the reason I lost literally every single game has multiple reasons. I'm not the best at deck building but I also had a bit of bad luck. I got mana screwed like more than once and um, one of the 
people I had to play against used to play competitive. He was flicking his cards the whole time, which is, I don't handle very well. And, um, well, he had a very good card that uh, was hard for me to like deal with, even if I wouldn't have been mana screwed. So I got a nice red die with the set symbol. Um, and after he like completely ruined me twice in a row, he w he wanted the best out of three. He just asked me if he could look at my deck because he knew I was not very experienced. And he gave me some advice. He basically built a new deck for me uh, because he looked at the two foils with the timestamps I got and he thought, well, those are pretty decent. And then decided to look at which th those two were white. I can see if I can grab them. And he decided to look at all my other white cards and apparently all the white cards were good. Also the like commons and stuff. So after that, I mm, I had a white red deck that I played the last game with, which I then also lost, but not like I did not just roll over and died. I actually put up a fight, but once again he had a legendary creature that was impossible to really get rid of. Um, and I got rid of it two times, and the third time I just couldn't anymore because I was out of removals. Um, I looked them up, I can read to you later what I was up against. I looked at the red one in my last game. The legendary creature is now like six and a half or seven euros online. So that's something. So this is the whole pack, as a part of it is in sleeves, because uh, well we took some sleeves with us to the game and it was just nicer to shuffle them with sleeves I think. Well I have one from a booster that my fiance basically already claimed because it is black blue, it's Ashok. Dream Render. It's a legendary planeswalker. Spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause their controller to search their library. Um, and the minus one ability is target players put the top four cards of the library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. So that's fun. do not have a very like specific plan in mind for this video. I thought I could just go through the cards a little bit and show you what I got while making some sounds with the cards. Um, tell you a little bit about how everything went. Like read the cards. Um, so my foil, uh, I had two foiled from like just the pre-release pack. I have the Wanderer. It's a legendary planeswalker. Um, it costs four mana of one white. It comes into life with five. Well, with a life counter of five, I suppose. Uh, the passive is prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and all the permanents you control. So it's a nice way to, like, block like red damage spells or annoying removal spells from blue and all that stuff. Uh, the minus two ability is exile target creature with power four or greater. So that can be really useful against the big stuff. And I actually used it this way for one of the big stuff that I had against me. I'll look it up because I have it open on my phone. The creature that I had a lot of trouble with was Elark the Raised Boar. It's a legendary creature, a boar god. 
it's five mana of which two red it's a six six it has trample and whenever it attacks you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step so it's like a really big dent um, then the thing that make, makes it so super annoying is when it dies or put into exile from the battlefield you may put it into its owner's library third from the top so I actually removed it twice but the third time I was out of ways to remove it so that sucked so that was really annoying and the player I played against that used to be uh, competitive also had a card like that it was 3-6 also uh, but with double strike so in practice a 6-6 six, six. and also 5 mana of which 2 white it was a god as well legendary creature and that it also had that ability like if you uh, if you kill it or exile it you can put it again in your own in your own library which is so annoying you can't really get rid of it it's a bit frustrating for me but whatever um the other foil with time stamp like date stamp that I got um, was exile all multicolored permanents uh, it's four mana of which one white it's called a Ravnica at war art is pretty nice I like lots of art I think I'm gonna like maybe single out cards that I like based on the art well this is interesting Ravnica at War and Emergent Zone both have this like big blue ball thing might be the same kind of thing but obviously it has a story the set has a story you have lots of Gideon stuff um, you also see a lot of Liliana which my fiance obviously likes very much he actually has a playmat with of Liliana and I think it's actually art from a card she's dancing with like a corpse basically so that's fun and it's a bit uncomfortable to, <laughs> to, to play against <laughs> and um well, one thing that got me excited for pre-release is like the story behind it I always normally don't really follow the story a lot but this time there was a really great uh, trailer like full fully animated trailer it was really beautiful it got me emotional kind of actually I don't know why but it really got to me and um, there's also a book about it and I'm seriously considering buying it even though it's not very easy to get because I live in the Netherlands and everything is always focused on the US and to some extent the UK and stuff So one of the things that I got from the booster packs was a legendary artifact, it's a vehicle that means that it's not a creature until you tap another creature to make this become a creature which I think is a bit of a weird mechanic um, but this one that I have is very strong, it's called Parhelion 2 it's 8 mana, of which 2 white it's a legendary artifact vehicle 5-5 five, five. flying, first strike, vigilance whenever Parhelion 2 attacks create 2 four, 4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking so they immediately join the attack um, but it has crew 4 so that means I have to tap any number of creatures I control with total power 4 or more 
Um, this vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. So it can't attack unless you have other stuff on the board. So you already need an army to make this one work, which is... Well, I mean, it's obviously strong when you actually are able to make it attack, but to get it there... So Emma has left the table. Guess I'll see in editing if I can actually hear something about like all the boring that she did. Now she's far away. I'm actually not seeing art that really like is my eye right now, which is interesting because I actually saw some pretty, pretty stuff when I was making the deck, but yeah. Maybe I can look at some of the other cards that I got. Zone gains triumph. Dread whore butcher. These are all. Oh, yeah, right. I know. This is the booster pack that I got at the end. This is not the booster pack that I used here. There's also some other stuff. Yeah, so here I have some cards that I use in the first in the first deck I made for the day. And one that was really nice, that was a combo I got off in the first game. That was fun. It didn't made me win, but it was a little bit of trouble for my opponent. I had Mogul, Loyal Companion, it's 4 mana, of which 1 green, it's a legendary creature hound, it has Trample, Vigilance, if 1 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters would be put on Mogul, Loyal Companion, that many plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 counters are put on it instead, so anytime it gets a counter it gets 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter more. Uh, it is a 3-3, but like that it can go big very quickly. And I played this one together with Courage in Crisis. It's a sorcery of 3 mana, which one green. And it says put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. And then proliferate. Proliferate, it means... Choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another counter of each counter they already have. So, I buffed this up to a 7-7 seven, seven, like that at once, which was nice. Um, but then my opponent removed the card and uh, in the end I still lost. That was, that was a nice thing to get off once. So, I got a few planeswalkers in total, not that many to be honest. One of the planeswalkers that I got was Nissa, who shakes the world. I think I already have another Nissa planeswalker in some other deck. Um, this Nissa is 5 mana, of which 2 green. She comes into the battlefield with a 5 life counter. Um, the passive is already pretty strong because it says whenever you tap a forest for mana, add an additional forest. So every forest you have counts for two. Um, the plus one ability is put three plus one plus one counters on up to one target non-creature land you control. Untap it. It becomes a zero 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 
elemental creature with vigilance and haste that's still a land so that's weird and the mine is eight as you get an emblem with land you control half indestructible search your library for any number of forest cards put them onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle your library so basically an infinite mana card uh, this is also a fun one. It's it's a common one, but I think it's pretty strong. It really accelerated my curve. Uh, the one time I had it in my starting hand. It's called Arboreal Grazer. It's one green mana. It's a zero three. It has reach. Um, when Arboreal Grazer enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. So can make a real difference. Mm. Well, this one's also pretty nice. It's also common, but I think it's pretty nice. Four mana of which one green. It's called Centaur Nurturer. It's a creature druid. When Centaur Nurturer enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life, and if you tap it, add 1 mana of any color. It's a 2-4. Well, pretty decent card. I, at one point, ordered my cards based on their... Rarity. Let's see if I can still have that somewhere. Oh yeah, this, uh, my basic lands, some tokens that I got, all different. I oh, hear some of the rares, I think. Some rares as well. This is no, these are not all oh, right. They didn't use these, that's why. Okay, I have to start ordering them somehow. It's a bit of a mess right now. Okay, so one that I got that is orange, which is one higher than gold. I don't remember what it's called, I'm sorry guys. Um, it's the one, the only one that I got. First of all, gold and silver and lower. Okay. Finale of Revelation. Two blue mana and X. So a sorcery. Draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, instead shuffle your graveyard into your library, draw X cards, untap up to 5 lands, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Exile Finale of Revelation. So you can put it in your graveyard and then use that again. So that was uh, something but I don't play blue. I didn't play blue. I usually don't play blue. I have it in some decks, but then it's like not the main color, but more of a assist kind of color. But that one's pretty strong. Hmm. Another blue one that I have is Kasmina, Enigmatic Mentor. It's a legendary planeswalker, 4 mana, which one blue? Spells your opponent's cast that target a creature or planeswalker you control, cost 2 mana more to cast. So that's always annoying. Um, the minus 2 is create a 2-2 two -two blue wizard creature token. Draw a card, then discard a card. It comes into uh, 
the battlefield with a 5 life counter. Many of these planeswalkers don't have a plus 1, so you do really need cards that proliferate, basically. But that's one of the mechanics of this set. I don't have a lot of proliferate. don't have many proliferate cards, though, so that's not too great. My fiance ordered a booster box of Four of the Sparks, so I think we're gonna be set for a while after this. Because the pre release came with. Um, in the pre release, you have six boosters. We got another booster at the end. And now we're gonna have a booster box. I actually don't know how many boosters are in there, but there are many. And it's so dangerous because opening those is basically like crack. It's it's addictive, it's kind of like gambling because you never know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get lucky or not, you're gonna get the card you want or not, you're gonna get the card that's worth a lot of money or not. So it's a little bit dangerous, which is the reason I usually don't partake in the... If I play Magic, um, I often buy the sets that are like pre-made. And sometimes when my fiance is buying cards and he thinks, well, this card would really like make that deck and make it way better, then I'm like, sure, order me the card. But usually I'm like, no, I don't want to spend all of our freaking money on this because it's a sink. It's such a money sink. It's crazy. It's a really, um, yeah, nice business they set up. So, for a video, it's actually not, not that bad to be flicking your cards. But when you're playing someone, please don't flick your cards. <laughs> it's, oh my goodness, it's nerve-wracking. And I was already a bit nervous because I had never been to the game shop before to play games, so there were all these new people. And then I found out that person I was playing against used to play competitive and I made such a stupid stupid mistake at one point I just kept flicking his cards please don't flick your cards at people it's not nice <laughs> oh, he was a nice guy he did not he was not mean or and like looking down on me as a newbie at any point and he gave me sound advice the end. But it was not the best magic experience that I've had. I can tell you that. I have been to one other pre-release. Um, that one was really fun. There was there were a lot of people, and um, I was also a bit nervous. It was in another town, so it was another shop. Um, it is already like a little bit uncomfortable to go to these pre-releases for a couple reasons for me it's because um, I'm a casual and I know there are always people that take it more seriously than I do and you always have the chance that someone's gonna look down upon you because of that and I know that that's their problem and not mine but it can still make the day itself not very fun um, when you come in new, there's almost always already like a group that really knows each other and there's a certain dynamic. It's always a little bit harder to step in an established group. And lastly, I'm a woman and most people there are men. So it was a very small tournament, there were only nine players and I was the only woman. And the other pre-release I went to a couple of years ago remember I don't remember when it was exactly I think my foiled was an offense I would have to look that up um, and there there were a lot of people I think maybe like 20 at that one and there were two women <laughs> so it seems like like every nine or ten there's one woman. <laughs> But 
that was a really nice experience because people were very nice and uh, there was not a lot of room so everybody was kind of in it together you know and I was there with friends so I had a small group of to support <laughs> um, and uh, we were also talking and uh, with that group we already did regular board game nights and another guy overheard that and we had some fun I had to play against him and he once sat next to me while he played s to a friend of mine so he had some contact with us and he thought well this is fun can I join he just came up to us at the end of the day and asked if he could join up with our board game group and we're like yeah sure why not and he has been a part of it ever since that's so fun it's not a very Dutch thing to do to go up to a group of people and invite yourself to something it's not very Dutch but it turned out really well and I, I thought it was really fun so coming into this pre-release I was like no one nothing's ever gonna top the first pre-release I ever went to <laughs> so yeah so this was very unstructured it was a little ramble I talked about some cards I didn't barely anything about my deck it's not it was not a very great deck with lots of synergy or anything it was first it was red green then it was red white or white red really and it has planeswalkers because that's the thing and I had lots of flyers in it but that's well it's white so that happens a lot um, so yeah it, it, this video was barely about magic I feel even though I talked about magic all the time because just like loose cards is not really magic it's about how a deck builds together and how you can play it and it feels like like one big yeah like like it's one thing that builds on top of each other but yeah I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up I hope you like my ramble I hope you fell asleep and you're not listening anymore anyway um, if you like to see more magic stuff I mean I have a few decks that I have never talked about before I have a couple um, I don't really remember what I discussed in my previous magic video, so I would have to look that up um, But like I have some stuff lying around so I have more Cards and things that I could talk about um, So let me know if you want if you'd like that if you're still listening anyway And uh, I'll see you guys next time.